Hi friends, Queen of Flannel here. Welcome back to the channel. So I'm really excited to bring this project to you guys today. First, let me introduce the uh, the book. I'm sure many of you have seen this image before. We're working in Kirby Rosanna's Color Universe today. This is one of his uh, recent uh, compilation books. This image can also be found in his Worlds Within Worlds book. And this project is a part of a community color with Ryan Colors and his community. So he decided that for the month of February, he was gonna host a, uh, a group buddy color. And this was the book in the image that his community voted on. If you have not visited Ryan's channel, you definitely should. Super, super cool. He does uh, a lot of reviews, especially in the, uh, the budget arena um, for supplies. And he's got a couple videos up there working on his version of this project. And so uh, one of the things that uh, he decided was that he wanted to start working more with water mediums. So he is wor working with the Derwent Ink Tents on his page and I decided that I was going to use it on mine. Um, let me throw my reference photo up there on the screen just so you guys can see, you know, what the inspiration was and where I picked my, uh, my colors from. And so uh, right now I am working with uh, Lapis Blue. This is pencil 0825. And I'm just kind of uh, lightly blocking in uh, where I think I initially want some of that blue color. Uh, I will often tell people with the ink tents that less is more. So when you're doing your first initial layers, I highly advise light pressure. Uh, you can always go in and add more color on the top. But if you come in too heavy handed and uh, too dark, uh, this medium is permanent once you activate it and it dries. So you cannot lift it like you would with a uh, watercolor or a watercolor pencil. So start light, build up, and um, yeah. So you'll notice here in a minute kind of like my hesitation of where I wanted to, uh, to start putting some of my color. And I'll talk about that in a minute when we start working with the next color. But um, yeah, I'm using a Tombow blender to activate my, uh, my Inktense pencils. I use this quite a bit when I'm working with water mediums, uh, either the, the ink tents or my watercolor pencils. I find for me that I like the, uh, the, the control a little bit better. Um, I have some, uh, fine tremor issues with, um, with my hands sometimes due to, you know, some health issues and, uh, with the water brush, um, when my hands shake sometimes, it gets a little messy and also especially in Kirby's books the US editions of Kirby's books they do not hold up very well to really heavy uh, applications of water so I have found that the uh, Tombow blender is a nice substitute to still be able to use those mediums in his book and so now I'm going in with my next color. This is 0405 Pink Flamingo. And so my initial thought process was that I wanted to keep the, the pink in the more white open areas and also use the paper as a highlight. And I didn't really want the pink and the blue to blend. So that was uh, part of the reason why I the blue and then I activated it and then I hit it with the heat tool because I knew that I was going to intersperse the colors but that I didn't want them to like smush together and so I'm keeping my application very very light through this area so I kind of had a thought process for uh, what I wanted to do a little a little bit later um, I will also leave the pencil combination in the description below. Fortunately, I ran out of time to make color cards for it. So I will do my best to walk you through when I change pencils. And really, I'm only using four pencils. One of kind of my personal like goals for, for this was to 
uh, stick to a minimal minimal amount of pencils and so rather than do like a three you know a three color blend for each color as do what I would do if I was watercolor painting and build my um, my shadows and my tone my tonal uh, values just by applying more color in certain areas rather than bring in a completely uh, different uh, pencil. So this was kind of where I started uh, having some hesitation about how I wanted to do these, uh, these scales. And on my reference photo, there is kind of a split between the pink uh, and the blue side of the scales. But there were also some areas where, uh, in the pink, where some of the scales had blue and on the blue had the... On the scales that were blue, there were some areas that had the pink interspersed, and then on the pink, there were areas where there was uh, some pieces of blue. And so I was kind of trying to plan out in my head how I was going to do that and not necessarily make purple. So while I was pondering over that, I went back down and added uh, a little bit more color to the face and now I'm starting to activate that that pink the pink flamingo and you'll notice I kind of bounce around uh, a little bit as I start moving up the body of the the fish uh, I find for me sometimes that if I work on one area too uh, too long uh, I get kind of tunnel vision with it so I'll move to another area and I'll block color in there. And sometimes I find that that helps me to adjust my vision for the piece as, as a whole. Because sometimes I have a plan, I have a, a, a soft plan going in. And then as I start actually putting the color down on paper, I, I will re rethink my plan. And so like in my head, it'll be like, okay, green in this area. Okay. Pink in this area. In this area but when you actually see it on paper then you're kind of like oh, okay it looks different than I had than I had planned and so you kind of have to readjust so I do a lot of uh, I call it soft blocking uh, of course it depends on the medium that I'm working with if it's something that I know I'm not going to be able to erase um, and that's kind of something I've been doing a lot with uh, with the polychromos as of as of late but I'm very much in this start light build up that way I can readjust. Yeah, I was still um not quite sure about this area. I have done a little bit of work to it since uh, since I filmed this and it looks a little bit better but again it was one of those I, I hit a point where I was playing with it too much and so I stopped and I moved moved to another section so now I am coming in with my purple pencil uh, this is 0735 amethyst and I knew I wanted that fin on the um, on the top of the fish's head to have that that purple color and so trying to figure out just how purple I wanted it so I blocked that in and now I'm back to the lapis uh, the lapis blue and some of these areas I blocked I blocked in and then um, activated it with the the pen in certain areas I blocked it in and activated it right away but I think because I was trying to figure out where I wanted things to to join up and how far out that purple was going to come so 
I went in with the, uh, the blue. And you'll notice me leaving uh, some white space there on some of those scales. Again, that was uh, just me trying to, to figure out where I wanted uh, some of the pink. So I'm pretty sure I did that because I knew I was going to put some of the pink over there. And the same thing with the pink. I knew I was going to bring the blue into this side. So I left some white space. So this was kind of uh, some of that, uh, the amethyst into the, uh, the pink. I liked the way it looked a little bit of like a shadow up around the, uh, the fin there. And so I tried to vary my, uh, my application of the, the pencil just to, you know, kind of give the lighting effect of uh, difference and, you know, tonal values in the uh, the scales because they're not all going to look the, the same. You know, some of them are going to be lighter, some of them are going to be darker. I was pretty, pretty happy with how this turned out in the end. And there's still some detail work to do to, to it later on, but... For that initial application, I was pretty pleased. This was a really fun project to uh, to work on. So I have attempted to color this fish in the other uh, the other book. I think I did it in Worlds Within Worlds, and I believe its mirror image is in another compilation book. And I've never been like satisfied with how any of them have have turned out I think one of them I tried to do like goldfish colors and so with uh this one I really wanted to do something different so that's part of the reason why I went to the um reference the reference photo for for this one um another thing I will mention and I kind of did it right here but I don't think it really translated on camera so whether you're using a water brush or the Tombow blender, you want to make sure that your uh, paper is completely dry before you attempt to go back in and add any more pencil. Uh, if you don't, you really run the risk of ripping, uh, ripping the paper. Uh, I, I did it. I did it a couple, a couple times where I went in and uh it wasn't quite dry enough and the paper actually had started to uh to pill a little bit but yeah you want to be super mindful of that and as you saw i have the little heat tool you can use a hair dryer i also recommend when you're using something like that don't just dry the front of your your page dry it from the back um, because of the top might feel dry, but that water will seep into those paper fibers. So it will still be damp underneath and you might not even realize it. And then you go in with your pencil and tear up your paper and then you're sad because you've ruined your, ruined your page. So that's one thing to, uh, to really keep in mind, uh, when you're working with water mediums in, uh, adult coloring books. And that's also part of the reason why I will bounce from space to to space so I'll hit it with a dryer and then I'll let it sit and I'll move on to another um another area so now I'm coming in with the amethyst again 0735 I knew I wanted kind of the the base of the the body to be this uh the amethyst the purple with some of the blue uh, kind of interspersed in there. I 
this this piece I did want the purple and the blue to kind of blend together around the edges And again, super, super light application here. Just until I could see how it, uh, how it looked. And I also kind of decided early on, so, um, you know, Kirby does a really amazing job of giving us all of, like, these, these lines for shading in detail. But I didn't really want to color ev like every single like scale uh if that that makes sense um i didn't want to color them all as like one or e each as like an individual scale because that would have taken forever so i kind of made the decision that i was going to color block them um and and then go back in with the pencil and just kind of intersperse uh, my my tonal value across like random like random scales shading each of these individual little tiny pieces was just I was not about that life and because this is a, a transparent medium you can still see Kirby's lines through uh, through the ink And this was kind of uh, where I was starting to plan out as I was moving through the, uh, as I will be moving through the, the tail section, how I wanted that to look. And we'll get to that in a little bit because I did start uh, working on the tail on camera. So this is where uh, what I was talking about, where I was just going to kind of go in and intersperse uh, a little bit of additional ink throughout random scales. I started doing it over here. Okay, so this was fun. Uh, this is a, a new color. This is uh, 0220 Sicilian Yellow. And I tested this out before I did this because I wanted to make sure that it was gonna, wasn't going to look like completely garbage. So what I did here was I layered the flamingo pink and the Sicilian yellow together. There's no peach in the, uh, the ink tents set, so I kind of had to make my own uh, because there were some areas on my reference photo that I felt like were, were more of a peach color. And so I do this when I watercolor. Typically I'll use, uh, uh, what is it, um, Rose Matter and New Gamboge. And then I'll add in uh, a little bit of a blue to tone it, tone it down. Um, and I didn't layer any blue into this combination. It was just the Sicilian Yellow and the uh, Flamingo Pink. And I got this kind of like peachy orange color that I really liked. I thought it. Uh, added some some pop to my scales so that gets used quite a quite a bit as we uh, start working on other other sections And so this is just some, you know, additional details through the, uh, the scales. And more of the, uh, Sicilian yellow. It's a back and forth at this point with the Sicilian yellow and the flamingo pink.
And the other thing that uh, you can do with the uh, with the Tombow Blender, especially once you've already kind of like applied a couple layers and your paper has, the paper starts to, to break down. Um, it's just, it is what it is. So when you're blending edges out and you're adding additional layers, rather than kind of like scrub the uh, the marker, the blender across the paper, you can kind of like pounce it back and back and forth. Um, and that will also help blend out some of those edges rather than trying to like drag the color around. Uh, one thing that also I have found helps is um, moving from your lighter layer into your darker layer rather than your darker layer into your light, lighter area when you're blending those edges out. Um, because then you kind of end up dragging all of that extra pigment out into the areas that you want light. So sometimes even if I have a white, uh, the white of the paper, I will start in the white of the paper um, and get it a little wet and then move up into the darker area and then it kind of pounce back and forth until I'm satisfied with how my edges are blended out. And so right now I'm just um, doing some detail work uh, on the face and trying to intersperse some of the flamingo pink into the areas where um, where I had the blue. And I am using some of Kirby's lines uh, here. And this is what I was talking about. So you'll notice um, I kind of go back and forth between a little bit of a drag with the uh, the pen and the little like pounces along the edges. I'm just darkening up around the uh, eyes and the mouth. And you can't see it on the uh, on the camera, but I have a little like piece of scrap paper off to the side. So occasionally I'll reach over and I'll scrub off my my brush. It depends on like what like what I'm doing since I knew some of these colors were going to be blended together anyways I wasn't as concerned about it but if you're working with you know varying like colors on the color wheel that you don't want blended together just make sure that you scrub your brush off in between so now I'm starting to work on the the fin that was the flamingo pink and now I'm coming in with a light application of the Sicilian yellow because I knew I wanted some areas of this to be that peachy color So this, I can't remember if I, if I touched that up in this, in this part or not, 
or if that was in the uh if I did that off camera but I did come back to that fin and add some uh um some some shadow so now we are moving up into the tail slash water and so this took me this took me a while um I I did part of it I blocked it in and then I activated it um and really what I'm doing right now is going in with the lapis blue in uh the areas where uh Kirby has given us like those uh dark uh shadow lines kind of like the what I don't know what to call it like the wrinkles of the fish of the tail but they're also like the the you know the the wave lines and so I knew that I wanted those areas to be the um the blue but that I was also going to pull some of that color out into the white space and that I was going to be coming back in with the purple and uh the flamingo pink later on so I was trying to be mindful of where I put the blue so I started out in uh, just working in small areas and then activating it and then um, going back in and building it up a, a little bit and kind of in my head plotting out where the other two colors were, were going to go. Um, so this process is pretty much, uh, let's see, yeah, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to transition into some music and let you guys watch this next little bit because it is literally just me going in and um, adding blue into the, the tail. Okay, well, after I finish the, <laughs> after I finish this, this part with the purple. So we'll, we'll talk through the purple and then I'll transition into some music and let you guys watch the rest of the process and then I will come back and I'll um, outro us and talk about what uh, the next plan for this project is. So yeah, um, now I'm coming in with the Amethyst 0735 and I did bring a little bit of that up into the base of the tail, uh, but Again, I was still kind of like plotting out in my head where I wanted to uh, to put that in terms of like as we get up into the tail slash water. And I still haven't quite decided what I'm going to do for um, for the background yet. I have an idea, but I'm not sure. I'll have to see how I feel once the rest of the project is done. Okay, so I'm going to transition into a little bit of music, let you guys watch us, and I will be back with you shortly.
Okay, I am back. As you can see, I've started blocking in some of the pink in the tail, um, and that should be uh, where we kind of wind down for part one of, uh, of this video. Um, I was just taking it piece by piece by piece uh, and seeing, you know, where essentially where it where it took me um i am using some of the sicilian yellow and larry met in because my reference photo had some peach in the uh the tail so as we kind of start to uh transition out um i think it will be mostly blue over on the uh the left side and keeping the pink on the this like little chunk right here so uh thank you guys so much for tuning in i super appreciate it if uh again this is a buddy color community color with ryan colors so if uh, you're not uh, sub to him i will tag him below so you can go visit his uh, channel uh, this is part one and part two will be uh tuesday uh and that will be done on our tuesday live stream uh live stream on tuesdays 10 30 eastern so look for the uh live noti notification schedule thing uh to go up on the channel after this video drops so you don't miss that and we will see where we get on Tuesday if there ends up being a, uh, a part three and whether or not that will end up being another video or whether or not we'll do it live. We'll just have to kind of see where we are at. So uh, thank you for all of your support. I super appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, be sure to uh, drop a like, uh, a sub. Uh, it that helps me to feed YouTube's algorithms and more people to see my videos. And uh, yeah, I will uh, catch you guys hopefully in the live stream on Tuesday. And uh, yeah, thanks so much.